Hey guys, it's Nicole and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share how I care for my summer blooming Phalaenopsis orchids. I really like these orchids. I have about a dozen of them, maybe a little bit more, and I really enjoy them. So I'm going to share how I care for them as well as why I like them so much. If you guys like this kind of video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more orchid content. So let's jump right in. So summer bloomers, they're a little bit different from complex uh, phalaenopsis that you find at grocery stores in that a lot of them are usually fragrant, which is really nice. They also push out uh, a lot of spikes. So with complex fowls, you usually maybe get one spike, two spikes, maybe three if you're lucky. Um, I had one complex fowl push out three spikes, but in the case of summer blooming phalaenopsis, a lot of times you can get even 10 spikes or more than that. They're really nice. Not only do you get multiple spikes, the spikes bloom sequentially. So they tend to be in bloom quite a lot, which is nice. The complex files, you tend to get them in bloom if you're lucky twice a year, if you're talking about a miniature phalaenopsis and the bigger ones only bloom once per year. So what I like about the summer blooming files is that since they bloom sequentially, you kind of always have something to look at when the temperatures are warm um not only that i find that these orchids also bloom quite young which is really nice i had a phalaenopsis bellina that i bought as a tiny seedling and within one year it bloomed and it was just gorgeous and it's still growing really nicely and over time as these orchids get larger they give you more spikes and more blooms so i find them extremely rewarding to grow so these orchids usually come from very hot and humid environments. As you can imagine, the name Summer Blooming Fowls, um, they like the temperatures warm to hot. So um, usually they grow very close to the equator. Uh, where they grow, it's usually very, very humid and um, they, they get a lot of water. Um, so I find that they're very easy to care for when you grow indoors if you can keep them moist, just considering where they grow. So it's not too hard to make these uh, orchids thrive. So with that being said, when they grow in the wild, they obviously attach themselves to trees. They're epiphytes. Um, but if you're growing in a home environment, if you pot them up, they'll get sufficient humidity from the substrate that you use that can keep the roots nice and humid and moist. So these are warm to very hot growers. The Bellina in particular, I find is a hot grower. They don't benefit from cooler night temperatures that you need to trigger blooms in complex Phalaenopsis orchids, as I mentioned, but they really thrive when temperatures are just above 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, but you really shouldn't let them get any lower than like the mid sixties to about 70 degrees. You wanna keep them nice and warm. Now, a lot of people ask me why I don't grow my summer blooming Phalaenopsis orchids in semi-hydro. And it's because since these orchids are warm to hot growers, I, I find that warm growers can do just fine in LECA, but hot growers, like the species like a Bellina, they like it really hot and LECA is cooling. And I find that it has an effect on how these orchids grow. And I've seen some growers put this in uh, LECA as well, and they don't have as much success. So if you're considering growing these orchids in semi-hydro, I highly recommend that you put these on a heat mat if your conditions are not very hot. Now, if your conditions are very hot, so you live in the Caribbean or you live closer to the equator, you could probably get away with uh, growing it in semi-hydro. Of course, the way that you pot things up is very environment dependent. I find that these orchids like to stay moist, which makes sense given where they grow in the wild, it's very hot and humid. So I water these orchids as they're approaching dryness. Um, one important thing is that you don't want the pot to constantly be soggy. Moisture is fine, provided that the mix is airy enough where the roots aren't suffocated. So whenever I pot these orchids up, I put them in a mix of sphagnum moss usually. You can use small bark as well, that usually works. It depends on your environment, so use what works for you that will retain moisture, yet won't be too soggy. If the uh, mix is too soggy, then your orchid can be prone to rot. So always remember when you're potting an orchid up, if you're using moss in particular, 
keep it nice and airy, keep it nice and fluffy, and the roots will come out nice and healthy. When watering, I don't stick to a schedule. I just see if it's approaching dryness, so I'll touch the top of the pot or I'll look inside of the pot, and if it's uh, starting to get dry, then I'll add a little bit more water. Larger pots will dry slower than smaller pots. Smaller pots will need to be watered more frequently. It's usually said that Phalaenopsis orchids are low light orchids, but I give all of my Phalaenopsis orchids moderate light. So I don't give them Cattleya level light or Vanda level light, but they get more like uh, Oncidium type light and they tend to do well. So I think if you give them more than just very low light, say if you put them in a northern facing window, they'll do okay, but they will really thrive if you give them more light and you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to scorch the leaves. So when you're giving light, you don't want it to be extremely um, high because you don't want those beautiful leaves to get hot and scorched and burned. So moderate light I found works really well for these. I find that these bloom for me all throughout the year, but mostly when it's warm. Because I grow indoors, it's pretty much warm all the time, so I get blooms from the spring all the way down to the fall. My LD Bears King blooms for me starting in March usually, and it goes all the way down till the end of fall. This year, because I repotted it in March, it's moving a little more slowly, but it's starting to push out some buds, and I know that that will bloom for me until the winter time. So whenever you have spikes on your summer blooming Phalaenopsis orchids, Never cut them off because oftentimes they will uh, bloom for you in the following season and you'll get more buds from there. This is a really nice feature that I like about the summer blooming fowls. Um, so they will grow um, more buds and every year, provided you're growing it well, they will give you a nicer show. You can cut the spike off if the spike turns yellow and dies off, but if it's green, normally you will get more buds from that same spike the next year, or you will get some cakeys from the spikes, which it can be annoying if it's giving you cakeys all the time, or it could be a good thing if you like to share with friends. I do know some growers that get cakey after cakey on some of these. I have a friend with the Phalaenopsis ludemaniana that he calls it a cakey machine. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, I would only cut the spike off if it's making cakeys, if your orchid is stressed somehow, but if it's healthy, that's totally fine. The fragrance on summer blooming fowls is really nice. So not all of them are fragrant, but a lot of them are, and a lot of them smell really, really good. So the Phalaenopsis Bellina, if you haven't smelled it, is worth giving a try. Um, it smells like really nice citrus, flowery smell, very strong. The Phalaenopsis violacea, it smells like a cinnamon type rosy fragrance. It's very, it's kind of different, unusual, yet very pleasant. And some of these can smell very strongly. So some of them can fill the room up with fragrance. Now, not all of them smell great, but they are very pretty and they make up for it by having so many blooms. So the Phalaenopsis amboinensis, that one smells kind of like a rubber plasticky smell. I don't like it. It's, it's not floral at all, but it's very interesting. But I still really like the orchid because I find the bloom so beautiful. And every year I get more and more blooms and more spikes. So the older your orchid is, the more of a show you're going to get. My Phalaenopsis hieroglyphica is one that's giving me a really beautiful show all the time. It's got so many spikes. And when you have orchids that are growing like that, those can be displayed in a basket and look really, really nice. You can hang them. You can see the flowers coming down. I also have an orchid called the Phalaenopsis zebrina. It's labeled that way, but I think it was mislabeled and it's a possible cross between the Phalaenopsis gigantea, crossed with the Phalaenopsis zebrina. Both are summer bloomers. That one hangs down as well. And I know that over time, I'm gonna get a really nice show and I could probably put it in a basket by a window and just really enjoy those blooms. The leaves on these orchids are really nice too. A lot of them have like a glossy shine to them. So they look a little bit different than the complex fowls that tend to just grow on top of each other. Um, I find that summer blooming fowls sometimes grow in a downward sloping motion. So in the wild, they attach to trees and they grow basically hanging down. 
So I find that these grow very similar to how they grow in the wild where the leaves kind of slope down. I love the shininess to them as well. I find these orchids very easy to grow in my environment. The species orchids for the most part are easy to grow as well and um, they're not tough at all. At least if you're growing indoors um, and you're able to keep them nice and moist and not too soggy, if you can give them moderate light, they usually uh, tend to do pretty well. One thing to keep an eye out for, as with any Phalaenopsis, is you don't want to water in the crown as you don't want the orchid to rot. So that's something to keep in mind when you're taking care of this orchid. And I feed them just like I feed the rest of my orchids. Phalaenopsis tend to be a little bit heavier feeders. They have uh, bigger leaves. So sometimes I use a little bit of slow release fertilizer and um, I will water during the summer when they're growing at a rate of 300 parts per million. And then in the winter, about 150 parts per million. If I don't see any leaves and it's not growing, then I don't feed. Um, but you can usually tell when you see new leaves coming in and I find that while they're blooming, sometimes they are pushing leaves. So I do feed while they're blooming if they're pushing leaves. You want to make sure that you flush these orchids as well, just like any other orchids, especially if they are in an organic setup. You want to make sure that you're flushing thoroughly with pure water once per month. I find these orchids very easy to grow. They're pleasant, they smell great. And um, if you want orchids that are blooming while your other complex Phalaenopsis are not blooming, highly recommend adding a few of these. You will not regret it. Well, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you next time. Bye everyone.